Hello and welcome to my specialization introduction and outdoor content guide for the Holy Priest in World of Warcraft A Battle for Azeroth. If you ever watched the primer video for this series, I recommend that you do so now. That there will be a link in the description below. Ah, I fucked it up. Meh. Hello and welcome to my specialization introduction and outdoor content guide for the Holy Priest in World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. If you haven't watched the primer video for this series, I recommend that you do that now. There will be a link in the description below and that video will get you up to speed on exactly what it is that we're doing in this one. Now, we're here on our Holy Priest. We've got our action bars visible and empty. If we go into our talents, these are the talents you can select to fulfill the requirements that were laid out in the primer video. And, and now that we've got that set up, we're going to hop into our spell book. But before that, I want to make sure it's very clear that this is an outdoor content guide for the Holy Priest. It is not a dungeon or raid healing guide, so we're not going to talk about all the optimal healing rotations and that kind of stuff. We're talking about how do you play this specialization if you're out there trying to level or quest or farm things. Uh, so keep that in mind as we move forward and know that because of that, we're probably going to be uh, ignoring and underemphasizing a lot of abilities that would be really good in those dungeon and raid healing scenarios. All right, so we're going to get into our spell book. We're going to sort out all of our spells. I'm not going to go in depth into every single one of these, but I will give you a brief description so you know what the spell does and can kind of understand why it's going where it is. And we're going to kick things off with our Desperate Prayer. This is a defensive cooldown. It increases maximum health by 25% uh, and instantly heals you for that amount. We have Dispel Magic. This is a combat utility ability that we're probably not going to use very often. Uh, it removes a beneficial magic effect from a target. Usually you don't need to worry about that in outdoor content, but uh, as you play and get into certain farm areas, you may pick it up and use it uh, at that point. Next we have Divine Hymn. This is a 3 minute cooldown that... Uh, we'll heal all target party members or party and raid members for a large amount over seven seconds increase healing done to them all this it's a big healing cooldown big defensive cooldown fade is a combat utility we're probably not going to use very often it removes uh, all threat on you for 10 seconds flash heal is a combat utility ability that will heal us for a small amount or an ally uh, with a short cast time Guardian Spirit. Uh, this is a defensive cooldown. It will summon a Guardian Spirit to watch over a target, and if that target were to die, the Guardian Spirit will die instead. Uh, something we're not going to use very often. Next we have our regular heal. Combat Utility Ability. This will deal a larger heal with a larger cast time. Holy Fire, part of our core rotation. Holy Nova, part of our core rotation. Holy Word Chastise is a crowd control ability that will incapacitate a target for 4 seconds. It also does some damage to them. Uh, and it gets some cooldown reduction from some of our abilities as well. Holy Word Sanctify will heal up to 6 allies within 10 yards. So that's a kind of a either defensive or offensive. A lot of these are overlapping depending on uh, you know how you want to play your... Uh, priest out there, your holy priest. Holy Word Serenity, this heals an ally for a huge amount. <clears throat> so this would be a combat utility we're probably not going to use very often. Same with Holy Word Sanctify. Alright. Leap of Faith, you can choose to put this in your combat utility or over in your miscellaneous section. I'm going to put it over there. Uh, it will pull a friendly target to you, but if you're out there doing stuff solo, this is totally useless. Uh, but if you are out there with a friend, then maybe you want to put it over here and you know occasionally use it to help them with some mobility. Next we have Levitate. Uh, this is a combat utility ability. It will levitate you or a friendly target and essentially what this does is it will cause you to float above the ground meaning you can uh, travel over water. Uh, you get and you also get slow fall. 
So if you fall and you cast Levitate on yourself, you will start to fall slowly, so you won't take fall damage. I use this all the time, you know, just randomly jump off a cliff to get to where I need to go faster, hit Levitate right before I hit the bottom, and then I don't have to worry about taking fall damage. So I like to put it over here because I use it a lot. Mass Dispel, that's a combat utility ability we're probably not going to use very often. Uh, it will remove harmful magic effects from uh, friendly players around you, and it will remove uh, beneficial effects from enemies around you. Mass Resurrection will bring all dead party members back to life. We can't use it in combat, so it goes over here in the miscellaneous section. Mind Control is a crowd control ability. It will let us control a mind uh, up to level 1 for 30 seconds. Uh, it's actually... we generally you're going to use this infrequently in open world content but you could use it i'll put it over miscellaneous for now uh just because uh it doesn't get a lot of use oh i gotta start this over this is horrible horrible Hello and welcome to my specialization introduction and outdoor content guide for the Holy Priest in World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. If you haven't watched the primer video for this series, I recommend that you do that now. There will be a link in the description below and that will get you caught up with exactly what's going on in these videos. Now we're here on our Holy Priest. We've got our action bars visible and empty. If we go into our talent tree, these are the talents you can select to fulfill the requirements laid out in the primer video. And with that all set up, we'll get into our spell book. Now, I want to make it uh, very clear that this is an outdoor content guide for the Holy Priest. This is not a dungeon or raid healing guide. And as such, we're going to be ignoring and kind of underemphasizing a lot of abilities and talents and things that would be good in that scenario because we're focused on how do we make our specialization play better in the situation where we're out there by ourselves, questing, leveling, and farming. Also, for the Holy Priest, because it is so centered on uh, healing, uh, a lot of our abilities are kind of going to be things that we aren't even really going to use out in the open world, but we are going to make a distinction when we're sorting them and have our uh, any abilities that help us survive by reducing damage and things like that in our defensive cooldowns and any abilities that have long cooldowns that help us heal better. Uh, over here in our offensive cooldown section. So there's a, a, a separation there. I wanted to make that distinction so you could understand why. If you've watched the primer video, um, you know, we're choosing to do things that way. It's just because we have so many abilities, we have to make, make a distinction somewhere because almost all of them are focused on healing and surviving. So uh, we're going to go into our spell book, sort out our spells. I'm not going to go really in-depth into a lot of these, uh, especially the ones that aren't particularly relevant to playing out in the open world. But I will give you a brief description, at least, of what they kind of do so that you can know what they do and understand why they're going where they are. So first off, we have Desperate Prayer. This is a defensive cooldown ability. It increases our maximum health and heals us for that amount. We have Dispel Magic. This is a combat utility ability. It will get rid of a beneficial effect from an enemy. You probably won't use that very often in open world content unless you're doing a farm on a particular type of enemy and you know that that comes in really handy. So we'll put that over here on the right side. Next we have Define Hem. So this heals all party or raid members for a large amount and then increases healing on them even more. So this is one of those abilities that heals the target and makes you heal better which is your job as a holy priest so this would be an offensive cooldown next we have fade this is an ability we probably won't use very often in outdoor content it's a combat utility that removes all threat on you we have flash heal this is a combat utility it's a quick spell that heals for an okay amount we have Guardian Spirit. Uh, this is a defensive cooldown. It summons a spirit that essentially will protect a target. If that target would die, the Guardian Spirit will uh, die instead. We have our regular heal. 
Uh, combat utility, longer cast time, bigger heal. Uh, we have Holy Fire, part of our core rotation. Holy Nova, part of our core rotation. Holy Word Chastise, part of our core rotation. Holy Word Sanctify, uh, this is a ability that will just heal allies within 10 yards. Uh, so this is a offensive cooldown. Holy Word Serenity, this is an ability that does a huge heal onto a single target. Offensive cooldown. Leap of Faith is an ability that if you're playing by yourself, you're going to want to stick over here in Miscellaneous because it pulls a party or raid member to you, and that's totally useless if you're solo. If you are playing with a friend, you might want to put it either you know, on your left or right side of your combat utility section so that you can you know, maybe help your friend with uh, mobility as well. Levitate is an ability that I use all the time. Uh, it floats you a few feet off the ground so that you can travel over water, and it also grants you slow fall. So I use this all the time. I just jump off a cliff, and when I get towards the bottom, I hit levitate, so I float down uh, pretty easily and don't take any fall damage. So it's a nice kind of travel utility ability. So I keep it down there. If you find yourself not using it very much, put it over in the miscellaneous section. Next, we have Mass Dispel. This will dispel... Uh, harmful magic from your friendly players and it will dispel beneficial magic from enemies uh, probably not going to use it very often so over here on the right hand side mass resurrection allows you to resurrect all party members uh, you can't use this in combat so we put it over here in the miscellaneous section mind control we'll put that over here in miscellaneous it's kind of up to you to move that where you want to uh, this is an ability that allows you to control the mind of a target up to one level above yours for 30 seconds uh, it does have some limitations on what it can be cast on uh, generally i i almost never use this ability but if you decide that you like it and you want to use it quite a lot uh, it doesn't have a cooldown or anything so you can incorporate it into your rotation however you like for me i'm going to stick it over in the miscellaneous section next we have mind vision this will allow you to see through the eyes of a target for one minute it's a you know kind of fun interesting ability we'll put that over in miscellaneous power word fortitude we're going to put that in our combat utility uh, because this is a buff that will increase the stamina of the target uh, by 10 percent it lasts for an hour so we're putting it here so that we just make sure to remember like, oh, okay, do I have this buff? If I don't, I need to hit this button. So we shouldn't be hitting it all that often, but we want to put it right there prominent so we remember. Uh, also, if you cast this on a party or raid member, then all the party and raid members will get buffed. Next, we have Prayer of Healing. This is a combat utility. It will heal uh, the target and four nearest allies for an okay amount. Prayer of Mending, this will put a ward on an ally that heals them the next time they take damage, then it jumps to another ally, and etc, etc. Uh, we'll put that on the right hand side here because, you know, it's more effective if you're playing with people as opposed to just maybe playing by yourself or with one other friend. Psychic Scream is a crowd control ability that fears all enemies within 8 yards. Purify will remove a harmful magic effect, that's another combat utility, we probably won't use that often. Same with, uh, we've got Renew. This is a combat utility ability. It does a little bit of a heal and then adds a heal over time effect to the target. Resurrection will, or resur yeah, Resurrection will bring one target back to life. Uh, can't be used in combat, so that goes in miscellaneous. Shackle Undead is a crowd control ability. It will shackle an undead enemy causing them to be unable to move or perform any actions kind of limited use depending on where you're at smite is part of our core rotation and finally symbol of hope uh, this is a offensive cooldown uh, it will bolster the morale of all heroes in your party or raid restoring two percent of their missing mana every one second for six seconds so as you can see a lot of these offensive abilities that we're putting down here in our cooldown section aren't really things we're going to be using in outdoor content but we had to make a division somewhere just because we have so many different cooldowns and rightfully so the holy priest is focused on healing so that covers all of the active spells that we have and as you can see we don't have a lot of stuff over here for our core rotation but we're going to talk about that and we do need to touch on the passives for the holy priest so you have Focused Will, 
Melee attacks against you cause you to gain focus will, reducing damage you take by 15% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 2 times. So we have some passive baked in damage reduction. That's good. Echo of Light will increase the healing of, or well, it will uh, cause our direct healing spells to heal for an additional about 30% or so of their healing over 6 seconds. So we get a baked in heal over time to our heals. And then finally, we have Spirit of Redemption. When we die, we become a Spirit of Redemption for 22.5 seconds. Uh, you cannot move, attack, or be attacked, or be targeted by any spells or effects, but you can heal, and your heals cost no mana. When the effect ends, you die. So if you're playing solo, this is kind of useless. Uh, it doesn't do anything for you, but if you're playing with a friend or two, uh, then it could help you keep them alive. All right, so the only thing that's super relevant there is focused will uh, getting that passive damage reduction so let's talk about the resource available to the holy priest you have one resource it's called mana you have mana a certain amount based on the amount of intellect you have and you spend that mana to cast abilities generally in outdoor content uh, your mana is irrelevant and it might as well not even be there you're mainly just focused on the cooldowns of your abilities in order to make your rotation make sense so for the holy priest we've got a whole four abilities here that we're able to use and so let's talk about them you're going to start combat by casting holy fire this consumes the enemy in holy flames causing a certain amount of damage and then even more damage over seven seconds it will stack up to two times this ability has a 10 second cooldown but you're going to start with that uh, then you're going to want to hit your Holy Word Chastise. Now, this does have a one-minute cooldown, uh, but it does a good amount of damage to the target, incapacitates them for five second, or four seconds, and then, more importantly, the cooldown is reduced by four seconds when you cast Smite. So, after you've hit these two abilities, you're then going to cast one of two other abilities. Either Smite, uh, which deals... An okay amount of damage to a single target and has a 20% chance to reset the cooldown of Holy Fire, which is our first ability here. Uh, or Holy Nova, which deals uh, damage to all enemies around you and heals all enemies around you. It also has a 20% chance to reset the cooldown of Holy Fire if any targets are hit with it. So... What we're going to do, we cast Holy Fire, we cast our Holy Word Chastise. If we're fighting one target, or you know maybe two targets, we're going to start casting Smite on the one target we want to kill. That's going to give us a 20% chance to uh, reset Holy Fire, so we can cast that again. Uh, and Holy Fire does stack up to two times on a single target. Or we're gonna, and also while we're casting that Smite, it's going to be bringing the cooldown of Holy Word Chastise down, so we can use that again. Or we're going to cast Holy Nova if we're fighting a bunch of different enemies. And that is going to also give us a chance to reset the cooldown on Holy Fire. So let's take a look at this real quick. Uh, we got a nice Warlock over here with 8 million imps. Fun times. Alright, so we're going to go up to our target. We cast our Holy Word Fire. We cast our Holy Word Chastise. We start using Smite. And we did get a cooldown reduction on Holy Fire, so we'll cast that again. Go back into our smite. We got another holy fire. So we'll cast that. Now we have two stacks of holy fire on that target. So. If we have two stacks. That's the maximum stacks. We can just cast the holy fire. Uh, if we want to. If it comes off cooldown. Just for that extra little bit of damage. But if possible we want to wait. And either cast it on a different target. That doesn't already have two stacks of holy fire. Or wait until those stacks of holy fire go off and cast it again. So let's take a look at it. We're going to smite. See if we can get it to proc again. There we go. And that's basically what you're going to do. Now if you do cast the holy fire after you have the two stacks... It will refresh the duration of the two stacks, so it's not horrible to uh, cast that, if that's the case, to cast it again if you already have two stacks. But uh, it's also just as good to switch to a different target if you have multiple targets and cast that 
holy fire on them. So, single target, holy fire, holy word chastise, start spamming smite. If you get a holy word fire cooldown reset, you hit that, go back into your smites, and basically just do this until your target is dead. Now, for fighting multiple enemies, then you're going to want to pick your primary target, put holy fire on them, hit them with your chastise, and then go in and start doing holy nova. And Holy Nova is going to do a nice chunk of damage to all enemies around you. And it has a chance to reset Holy Fire. It's just not wanting to. There we go. And that's pretty much it. That's the rotation. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you're taking a good amount of damage, then that's when you want to reach for either your Flash Heal or your regular Heal give yourself a heal you can also use your renew to kind of get ahead of it put it, it gives you a little bit of heal, healing but then puts a pretty strong heal over time buff on you which will keep you healed as you're focused on dealing your damage and that's all there is to it so the next thing is to get into the talent tree and try to create a build that's going to work well in open world content so let's go ahead and load that up Alright, so this is the build that I recommend that you use in open world content. It's definitely not the only build you could use. It's the one I like, recommend, and will be showing off at the end of this video. Uh, so we're going to go through each of the talents and talk about why we've chosen it and how it helps contribute to this build. So first off, we have Enlightenment. You re regenerate 10 mana 10% 10 faster. Uh, honestly, this one I just picked because, you know, this is a uh, healing specialization, so a lot of the talents are oriented towards that, uh, which means sometimes there's slim pickings uh, in order to find a talent that is going to help you in outdoor content. Uh, this one seemed like the best one, but feel free to take any uh, of these, whichever one kind of suits your fancy. Next, we have Angelic Feather. We're going to put this in our combat utility section. And just for visualization's sake, I'm going to move Power Word Fortitude over here and bump these down. So Angelic Feather has three charges, and when you cast it, it allows you to pick a spot to put down a feather. And when you run through the feather, you get a 50% movement speed increase for five seconds. All right, so you can be running along, throw that in front of yourself, and get a nice movement speed buff and this is really nice because priests as priests we don't really have a lot of movement abilities so that will help uh increase our ability to travel from place to place or get ourselves out of hairy situations if we need to next we have cosmic ripple when holy words serenity or holy words sanctify finish their cooldown you emit a burst of light that heals up to five injured targets for 503 once again, this is a talent where all or a talent tier where everything is oriented around healing. So I figured take Cosmic Ripple. That way, if you do use Holy Word Serenity or Sanctify, uh, which uh, we have Sanctify right here and Serenity right here, these are the ones that do heal. They've got one minute cooldowns, um, and generally you're going to use them uh, if you need healing, and this gives you another little burst of healing. Slim pickings, I know. Next, we have Shining Force. This is a crowd control ability. Uh, it emits a burst of light, and it knocks away enemies and slows their movement speed by 70%. So if you're in a bit of a you know pickle, you got a bunch of enemies attacking you, and you need some breathing room, you can cast Shining Force, get them away from you, heal yourself up, top off, or just run away, whatever you want to do there. Uh, and it's got a 45-second cooldown, so you can use it pretty often. Next, we have Surge of Light. Your healing spells and smite, which we're going to be using a lot, have a chance to make your next flash heal instant and cost no mana. Stacks to two. So uh, this is going to help us out because as we're casting smite a whole bunch, we're going to be able to get these Surge of Lights uh, and make our flash heal uh, cost no mana and be an instant cast so if we do need healing we're casting these smites we can just pop that flash heal real quick and go right back to dealing damage then we magically got an ability that will actually deal some damage we have divine star so this is going to get incorporated into our rotation 
It has a 15 second cooldown. It throws a Divine Star forward 24 yards, heals all allies in its path, but also deals damage to all enemies in its path. Then, after it reaches its destination, it comes back and does the same thing. So, nice kind of like boomerang uh, ability we have, and a way to deal more damage. Uh, so, we're excited about that. And finally, Light of the Naru, the cooldowns of your holy words are reduced by an additional 33% when you cast the relevant spells. So what this means, mainly for us, is that now instead of uh, getting a 4 second reduction when we cast Smite on our holy word Chastise, it'll now be something like a 5 second reduction. So uh, we'll be able to use holy word Chastise a little bit more often. Um, and then if we do happen to need to use our Holy Word Serenity or Sanctify or anything else, uh, then when we do that, the relevant spells will help increase or decrease the cooldown of those abilities as well. So slim pickings, but we do get some instant cast healing, uh, damage dealing ability, a reduction on the cooldown of one of our damage dealing abilities, and some speed buffs and crowd control. So uh, we do what we can there. Now this isn't going to change our rotation all that much. Uh, the only thing that's different now is that uh, now we have, if we Holy Fire, we can Holy Word Chastise, use our Divine Star, start using our Smite, and now we're going to get a better reduction in our cooldown on our Holy Word Chastise, so we can come back to that. And once our Divine Star is off cooldown, we'll use that again. And it's just a little bit smoother of a rotation now. We can eke out just a little bit more damage that way. So that's it. That's all there is to the build. Uh, the next thing to do is talk about the PvP talents. If you were wanting to toggle on War Mode and mainly focus on PvE, so first off, I recommend that you take Relentless. This will replace your Honorable Medallion and reduce the duration of any incoming crowd control effects by 20% passively, so it's a nice set it and forget it talent. Holy Concentration. Uh, after being interrupted while casting a spell, the duration of silence and interrupt effects is reduced by 70% for 20 seconds. So this is just nice. If you're going to be out there doing, uh, you know, with war mode on, you're probably going to get attacked. You'll probably get your spells interrupted. This will help... Uh, to mitigate that a little bit or sometimes you are facing uh, PVE you know AI enemies that will knock you down or interrupt your spells as well so uh, this can come in handy there next we have greater fade this will replace fade which right now fade it just removes all your threat for 10 seconds uh, and with this ability it increases the cooldown so the cooldown on fade is 30 seconds it bumps it up to a 45 but it removes all threat and increases your movement speed by 50% causes, and causes most melee ranged spells to miss you. Last 4 seconds. So now this ability fade that we really weren't using for anything becomes a 50% increased movement speed ability that lasts 4 seconds that we can cast every 45 seconds. So it gives us uh, a way to turn this kind of useless spell into uh, a little movement boost. And then finally inner focused Provides immunity to silence and interruption effects for five seconds and causes the next effect chance, the next critical effect chance of your next heal, flash heal, holy word serenity, holy fire, and smite by 100%. So this is an ability on a 30 second cooldown. We can hit this pretty often uh, and it will increase the critical effect chance of our holy fire and smite. So just another way to try to get that little bit of extra damage, especially when we are fighting against rares or elites uh, and it's taken a while to kill them. You know, we probably want to use inner focus there, get our holy fire or, or our smite going with that. So those are the talent, talents that I recommend that you take. Uh, the next thing to do is to take this build out into the open world, test it against some different enemies. So I'm going to cut to that and I will see you there.
All right, so we're here in Surumar City. We're going to fly down and try out the build against a couple different types of enemies. So well, let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to open up, remember, with our Holy Fire. We're going to cast our Holy Word Chastise, and that guy is dead. <laughs> uh, so now, as you can see, we were able to take that guy out pretty quickly, but now we have a long cooldown on that Chastise ability. So uh, this is where we're going to go in. We're going to cast our Holy Fire. We're going to cast our Divine Star, and then start using our Smite to kill that guy. Alright, now everything is on cooldown, so we really, at this point, are just able to spam Smite to take this person down. We cast our Holy Fire when that's off cooldown. Uh, if it had been worth it, we would have used our Divine Star there. So once again, we can Holy Fire... Holy Word Chastise, use our Divine Star, start using our Smite. Alright, we got our Holy Fire back up. And there you go. So, there's a little bit of meat to this build. Um, it's not, you know, super useless. And there we got our Instant Cast Flash Heal, so that's nice. Now, what we want to try to do is we want to try to gather up a few different enemies here. And see how this works in a situation where you have to fight multiple targets. So let's go ahead and put down our Angel Feather. That will help us to speed things up and get in here. Okay, so we have multiple targets. We're going to cast our Holy Fire there. My guy is bugged out and won't stop running, so that sucks. Alright, use our Divine Star. We're going to get our free Flash Heal. We're going to use our Sanctify. Start spamming our Holy Nova. Alright, we've got another Holy Fire, so we'll put that down. This is where we can easily heal ourselves here. If we wanted to, we could cast our Holy Word Serenity. That's going to heal us back to full. Uh, we've got our Divine Star again. We've got our Holy Fire we can cast. We can either cast Holy Nova there. Now that we're back to a single target, we're going to want to go back into casting Smites now. Got our Holy Fire off cooldown. Use our Divine Star again. Our Holy Word Chastise is back up. Go back into casting Smite. Got our free, our reduced cooldown on our Holy Fire again. Right back into casting Smite. And there we go. So we were able to uh, take on several enemies there with this build. Uh, the kind of key there is you have to realize that if you are taking on multiple enemies as a Holy Priest, uh, you're not going to kill them very fast. They're probably going to do a lot of damage to you, but you can do a lot of healing to make up for that. So if you get kind of low, you just cast one of your heals. You're basically at full health. You just start the pro the process all over again. Uh, so that's kind of the upside to playing on the Holy Priest is you really, you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about dying and you don't have to worry about downtime in between enemies. So you can see here, I'm not, I haven't used any abilities. I'm just spamming holy nova that wasn't the fastest way to kill them but it was super easy super lazy and i took like no damage i can do a quick flash heal and get myself back up so now in this case we do have a, a rare spawn here and we'll show how the rotation works we holy fire we chastise divine star we go into our smites and start spamming these Hoping to get our Holy Fire. We're going to cast that again. Right back into it. We did get our free... Our, our instant cast Flash Heal. We got Divine Star off cooldown again. And Holy Fire. So, I mean, it's not the fastest uh, specialization for killing things. And, I mean, rightly so. It's a healing specialization. But as you can see, it's not that hard to get out there and fight things. You just take a little longer to kill stuff. But there's there's no downtime in between uh, fighting enemies because you can just heal yourself back up. So, 
All right, I hope this has helped you to understand how to play the Holy Priest in open world content a little bit better, giving you the confidence to get on your own own holy priest go out there start questing leveling farming uh see if this is a specialization you'd like to play in battle for azeroth if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe whatever you want to do to keep encouraging me to make this type of content and uh, i hope you have a good time in battle for azeroth and thank you for watching